Steelers go to 9 and 0. We'll visit Jacksonville. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, this time on the Pittsburgh Steelers. I asked you guys last video which team you wanted to see, and a lot of you guys asked for the Steelers, and I meet a lot of you, so here it is. Also, I've been thinking about starting a new series, where I choose every team's top 10 plays of all time, in my opinion, and then break them down by showing the background, play art, and aftermath of each play. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this, or any other series ideas that you have. One final thing before we get into this video, 92% of you guys are still not subscribed to the channel. Please consider subscribing, it's free and it helps support the channel, but without further ado, let's get straight to this video. The Pittsburgh Steelers and Steeler Nation select, and this is not even my choice, but a good one, Le'Veon Bell, running back. During the 2012 season, the Steelers had a huge problem with taking care of the ball. Running backs and receivers were constantly fumbling throughout the season, and the Steelers attempted to address this by drafting Le'Veon Bell, in part because in college he was known for taking care of the ball. On the defensive side, the Steelers, who are known for their pass rush, had slowly lost its fire with a declining defensive line. They attempted to address this by drafting Jarvis Jones in the first round. Overall, the Steelers team was aging quickly, and the Steelers needed their new talent to step up in order to perform. The Steelers had a rough start to their season, starting off 0-4 for the first time since 1968. But the team rallied in the second half of the season, going into Week 17 with a 7-8 record. In order to qualify for the playoffs, the Steelers would have to win their game, and the Ravens, Dolphins, and Chargers all had to lose. The Steelers ended up winning their game, and the Ravens lost, and the Dolphins lost, but the Chargers ended up beating the Chiefs 27-24 in overtime to eliminate the Steelers from playoff contention. Oh, to send Pittsburgh to the playoffs! No! Oh. Somebody's gonna have to sell their vacation home in Pittsburgh now. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Ryan Shazier, mm. linebacker, Ohio State. Last season, Ben Roethlisberger had one of the best seasons in his career, and the Steelers were looking to use his momentum to carry the offense further. The Steelers' biggest weakness had become their defense, which allowed 23.1 points per game last season. To address this, they drafted Ryan Chazier and Stefan Tuitt, while also signing Michael Mitchell to boost their defense. The Steelers once again got off to a slow start, going 3-3 in the first 6 games before they rallied behind Big Ben, Antonio Brown, and Le'Veon Bell to lead the Steelers to an 11-5 record. Behind their incredible performances, the Steelers became the first team in history to have a 4,500-yard passer, 1,500-yard receiver, and 1,300-yard rusher all in the same season. In a rematch against the Ravens, the Steelers' offensive line struggled as Roethlisberger was sacked five times and threw two interceptions in the game. The Ravens beat the Steelers by 13 points, marking the Steelers' fourth biggest loss in postseason history. The Ben Tate in and out of his mitts and picked off by T. Sizzle, but watch T. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Bud Dupree, linebacker, Kentucky. The Steelers offense had reached an unstoppable level, with Antonio Brown and Big Ben emerging as the top players in the position, along with an incredible season from Le'Veon Bell. The biggest problem was still on defense, with Troy Palomalu, Ike Taylor, and Jason Worrells all retiring. Once again, most of their draft picks went to improving their subpar defense. The Steelers' season was full of ups and downs, as both Le'Veon Bell and starting center Marquise Pouncey were injured for most of the season. Big Ben was also injured for a couple games, leaving backups Michael Vick and Landry Jones to take over. 
Despite all these injuries, the Steelers still managed to go 10 and 6 for the last AFC playoff spot. In a wildcard matchup against the Bengals, the Bengals held a 1 point lead with only a minute 50 remaining. Roethlisberger had gotten injured earlier in the game, causing Landry Jones to step in. Jones immediately threw a pick, effectively ending the Steelers' season. After the pick, the Bengals attempted to run the ball and burn the clock. When running back Hill was stripped by Shazier, this time an injured Roethlisberger checked back into the game and led a drive to around the 50-yard line when the Bengals picked up two 15-yard penalties to give the Steelers a chip shot field goal to easily win the game. This was a huge win for the Steelers and an absolutely devastating loss to the Bengals. Well, he just rolled to the sideline, would win it if he makes it, and the kick is drilled, and the Steelers are back. The Steelers then went on to face the number one seeded Broncos. The game was close heading into the fourth quarter when the Broncos went on an 11-0 run to take a 10-point lead. The Steelers managed to score three points but were unable to complete a comeback and were eliminated from the playoffs. After the game, sources said that the Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin was seen sobbing in the locker room, just showing how brutally close this loss was. Pittsburgh Steelers select Artie Burns, defensive back, Miami. The Steelers were met with some tough news during the offseason that Martavis Bryant would be suspended for the entire year after failing six drug tests. Despite this loss, the Steelers offense was still solid. It was the defense that would dictate how far the Steelers could go this season. Their secondary had once again struggled and the Steelers attempted to address this once again by drafting Artie Burns and Sean Davis to add more speed to their lineup. Overall, the Steelers look strong once again and poised for a deeper playoff run than last year. In classic Steeler form, they started the season off a disappointing 4-5 before rallying in the second half of the season to win 7 games in a row to clinch a wildcard playoff spot. In the first round, the Steelers easily beat the Dolphins, with Roethlisberger finding Antonio Brown on two consecutive touchdown passes from 50 and 62 yards out to win the game 30 to 12. Second and seven, and what a catch by Brown! And he slashes right past the secondary, and he's taken off for a second touchdown in the first eight minutes. A 30 to 12 Pittsburgh Very victory. After blowing out the Dolphins, the Steelers had a tougher matchup against the Chiefs. Steelers kicker Boswell hit a record 6 field goals to take an 8 point lead heading into the 4th quarter. The Chiefs managed to score a touchdown late in the game but were denied on a 2 point conversion allowing the Steelers to win the game without scoring a single touchdown. On Davis. After their tough road win, the Steelers went on to face the Patriots in the AFC Championship. In the 3rd quarter, the Patriots dominated to end the Steelers 36-17. Pittsburgh Steelers select T.J. Watt, linebacker, Wisconsin. <laughs> After their tough loss to the Patriots, Roethlisberger apparently contemplated retiring, but decided to stay on for what he thought would be his last season. During the offseason, the Steelers attempted to address a lot of the issues that were brought to light after their loss to the Patriots. Firstly, their offense had ground to a standstill after Bell got injured, as teams would just double Antonio Brown, effectively removing the Steelers' offense. To address this, the Steelers drafted wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster and running back James Conner to provide depth on the offensive end. On the defensive end, the Steelers had managed to improve last season from 21st in the league in yards allowed to 12th, but continued to build their defense by drafting TJ Watt to build what would become a terrifyingly strong defense. This time, the Steelers managed to find their groove early in the season behind incredible performances from their quarterback, receivers, running backs, and offensive line. Their defense was also dominant behind Cameron Haywood and Ryan Shazier's performances, leading the Steelers to a 13-3 record straight into the divisional round. But the season was still heartbreaking as midway through, Ryan Shazier suffered a horrible back injury that threatened his ability to ever walk again. Luckily, now we know Shazier is fine, but the Steelers did lose an incredible linebacker that day. Defense is not getting up. 
said this Cincinnati rivalry has gone a little bit off the edge and he said last night I worry about players getting injured on both sides when this game is played because sometimes it crosses the line. In a divisional matchup against the Jags, both teams struggled defensively and thrived offensively. The Jags started off with a 21-0 lead and despite the Steelers slowly cutting down on their deficit, they ended up losing the game by only 3 points. Roethlisberger became the first QB to throw for 5 touchdown passes and still lose the game, and the Steelers were heavily criticized by their fans and media for looking past the Jags to a rematch of the Patriots. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Terrell Edmonds. So. This offseason would be filled with drama and distractions with multiple problems with all their star players. It started off with Le'Veon Bell refusing to sign a franchise tag and hold out for a better contract, which would end up lasting the whole season. After Roethlisberger contemplated retiring, the Steelers decided to draft Mason Rudolph, which caused further controversy with Roethlisberger, claiming that he was surprised by the decision and initially refused to mentor the young QB. On top of all that, the star of the offseason drama was Antonio Brown, who came into the season full of incidents, including tossing furniture out his apartment window, arguing with the offensive coordinator, and getting multiple speeding tickets. The Steelers team was still strong on paper, but their off-the-field drama raised multiple questions on whether they could be focused enough for a title run. The offseason drama ended up leaking into the regular season, where the Steelers were constantly being distracted by disputes between coaches, players, and the media. Despite this, the Steelers still had a solid chance at the playoffs before collapsing in the final six games, losing four of them because of penalties, lapses in judgment, botched coverages, and an overall lack of concentration. The Antonio Brown saga reached its tipping point when the Steelers decided to name Juju the team MVP, leading to Brown requesting a trade and calling out Juju on social media. In the end, the Steelers ended with a 9-6-1 record, failing to qualify for the playoffs. Pittsburgh Steelers select Devin Bush, linebacker, Michigan. Yes, sir. Well, I'm not. Offensively, the team was obviously hurt by the loss of Antonio Brown, who had logged 100 plus receptions every season since 2013. In addition to losing Brown, the Steelers also lost Le'Veon Bell, who had signed with the Jets during free agency for less than the Steelers had offered. Despite these offensive losses, the removal of both Bell and Brown had lessened the tension in the locker room drastically, but they still needed capable players to perform, leading to the Steelers drafting Deontay Johnson to help out on the receiving court. This new Steelers team was a confusing one, as there wasn't much consensus on how far this team could go if they stayed healthy. The season started off with a low note, with the Steelers going 1-4 and, and losing Roethlisberger for the entire season in just his second game. Despite these losses, the Steelers defense stepped up and won 7 of their next 8 games straight before dropping the last 3 in tough losses to be eliminated from the playoffs. Puts McDonald in the backfield and then goes deep downfield and it is caught! In the 2020 NFL Draft, Pittsburgh Steelers select Chase Claypool, wide receiver, Notre Dame. Despite not making the playoffs, everyone was impressed with the Steelers for how far they went. The Steelers offense looked strong once again with Big Ben returning for the season and the newly drafted Chase Claypool helping out the receiving court. The best part of the Steelers had become their defense, which was already superb but became even better after trading for Minka Fitzpatrick to boost their secondary even further.
Even though expectations are high for the Steelers, no one expected them to be this good. In the first nine games of the season, the Steelers looked unstoppable with its high-powered offense and lockdown defense. Their biggest win of the season came when they took down Lamar Jackson and the rival Ravens in a dramatic finish. The finest soft spot in the pocket, and it's away, and here it is to the end zone, and it's broken up! At the time of making this video, we are still waiting for the Ravens Steelers rematch on Thanksgiving Day, which should be as dramatic as the last time, with the Steelers attempting to stretch their winning streak to 11 wins. Overall, the Steelers team has had a lot of ups and downs with injuries and controversies over the last seven years. They have always struggled to have both a powerful offense and defense. Comment down below if you think the Steelers will remain undefeated for the rest of the season, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.